In this video, we're going to see how to install Kali using the ISO image. So in case the method explained in the previous video didn't work for you, or if you want to install it as a main machine instead of a virtual machine, then you can use this method to use it. So you can use this method to install it as a virtual machine or as a main machine. If the method in the previous video works for you, and that's the method that I'm actually going to be using, the one in the previous video. But in any case, if you wanted to install it as a main machine or if that method didn't work, then you can go ahead and use this method. So again, first things first, you have to download Kali from the following link. And just download the version that's related to you. So I'm downloading the Kali Linux 64 bits. And as you can see, I have it downloaded here already. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my virtual box that I showed you before in the previous lecture. I'm going to create a new machine and then I'm going to call this machine Kali Linux. I called it 2016 because this is the latest version at the moment that, that are released by them. And I'm going to say it's Linux and it's Debian based. So we're going to look for Debian 64 bits. So Kali Linux. Debian 64. Now I'm going to say continue. And then it's asking me how much RAM do I want to give to this virtual machine. Now I'm going to get to give it some RAM because I'm going to be using this as my main machine. Now one gigabyte is plenty, but I'm just going to give it more RAM um, just because I'm installing now and I want the installation process to go very fast. So one gigabyte is plenty. It's enough for it, but I'm giving it for right now. So uh, I'm going to click on continue. And then it's asking me uh, for the hard disk and ho how much do I want to give it as a hard drive. So it's saying it should take eight gigabytes is re the recommended for it. And I have three options of the way that this virtual machine going to use a hard disk. So you can not add a hard disk, don't do that. Uh, you can create a virtual one which can expand or you can use an existing hard disk. So we're just gonna keep it on the middle one to create a virtual hard disk for this virtual machine. And we're just going to keep it the same option that uh, it has as default. And we're going to leave it as dynamically allocated. So we're just literally clicking continue, continue on this. And I'm going to give it more than eight. Because as I said, we're going to be using this a lot. This is going to be our main machine. I'm actually going to give it 20 gigs or 22 gigs. That's no problem. Okay, so the virtual machine is set up now and it's all good. Now I'm going to go on the settings and I'm going to make sure that it's using enough CPU. So I'm going to go on the processors and I'm going to give it another core. It only has one core now. So I gave it two cores and you don't really, you don't need to do this again. One core is enough. I'm doing this just so that it runs quicker for me. And I'm also going to go on the network and make sure that it's using NAT and AT. Now this is very important, especially when we go to the network penetration test part. So make sure your network is set to an AT NAT. So I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to start the virtual machine. So now it's telling us that uh, we didn't configure the virtual machine to boot from any place. So literally there is nothing installed on this virtual machine right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it boot using the Kali Linux image that we downloaded from the link that I just showed you this image right here. So I'm going to just navigate to that image. And this is it. So I'm just going to click open and start. Now this is going to boot from the image that we downloaded from the Kali website. And as you can see now, it's telling me what do I want to do now? You can use Kali Linux live. You can literally just boot right now using the ISO image and use Kali Linux. The problem is you will not be able to restore the stuff that you install. So say, for example, you installed a, a certain program or you stored a certain file. Every time you reboot, you will lose the data. So you don't you don't really want to do that. So we're going to go down to the graphical install using the arrows and press enter to install Kali Linux as a virtual machine. This is going to give us a machine just like a completely separate laptop, but it's going to be installed inside our computer. Now, as you can see now, the first thing, these instructions are, are going to be very easy, but I'm going to walk you through them. The first thing it's asking us about the language. I'm going to keep it as English. It's asking us about the country. I'm going to set that to Ireland. 
and then it's asking us about uh, the key map. I'm just going to give it as uh, leave it as Irish. Now, once the installation starts, starts I'm going to be pausing and uh, resuming the video just so that uh, you don't waste time watching my Linux getting installed. At the moment, this is quick, so I'm just going to keep the video going. So it's asking us to configure the network and the name of the host name of the machine. I'm just going to leave it as Kali. And then it's asking us about the domain name. I'm going to leave that empty. And now it's asking me about the root password. This is very important. The root password or the root account is the account the same as the administrator account on Windows. This is the account that has privileges to do anything on the system. This is the highest privileges on the whole system. So it's asking me to set a password for the administrator or for the highest account in the system. I'm going to set up a password right now for it. And I'm going to continue. Now it's asking me how do I want to install Kali. Now if you're installing it with Windows in a dual boot, not inside a virtual machine, then you'd want to make sure that you won't be overwriting your main operating system. But we're installing it inside a virtual machine, so there is no way you can mess it up. The worst you can do is just not install Kali properly and then install it again. There is no way you can harm your main operating system because it's going to be installed as a completely virtual separate machine. So all we need to do is just tell it to do the guided and use the entire disk. That will use the entire virtual bit disk, not the entire disk that you have on your computer. So it's going to use the entire disk that we created two seconds ago when I gave it 22 gigabytes. And as you can see, it has it here. It's actually 24 gigabytes and it was able to detect it. So obviously this is not my whole hard disk, but this is the hard disk that's accessible for the virtual machine. So actually it thinks that this is the whole hard disk. So we're going to leave everything in uh, one partition right here. And finish and install. And here is just confirming if I want to write the changes to disk. I'm going to say yes. And now it's installing Kali on my machine. Now I'm going to pause the video and uh, re-record every time I get asked for something else. But I'm just going to pause it so that you don't have to look through the video as it gets installed on my computer. Okay, so now it's asking me that if I want to use a network mirror to make sure that the packages are or the some of the programs are up to date so basically it's just going to make sure that everything that's been installed is up to date so i'm going to say yes and then i'm not going to use a proxy so i'm just going to click on continue now it's asking me if i want to install grub grub is a bootloader that basically acts as the boot.ini for Windows. Basically, it allows you to boot into Linux. So it's what you see before the Linux distro gets booted up. So I'm going to say yes, I want to install that. And then I'm going to select to install it on the hard drive that I created before. So it's in dev SDA. Now it's finishing the installation. So the installation is over and I'm just going to click on continue now to reboot into my new, freshly installed Kali Linux distro. Okay, so now it's booting up and this is Grub. So this is what you see while I said uh, it's what boots you up into Linux. So it asks you what you want to do now. You want to boot into Kali Linux or you want to go into advanced options. So we're just going to go and say boot into Kali Linux, please. And here we go. So it's asking me for the username to log in. I'm going to set my username as root. As I said, this is the administrator, the user with the highest privileges on the system. Now it's asking me for the password. This is the password that we picked when we installed Kali. And here we go. Now this is our Kali machine. This is the machine that we're going to use in our penetration testing attacks. So this is the attacker machine that we're gonna use in order to try and hack into other computers. Now, don't be scared about this. I know it's a completely different operating system. It looks differently and it works differently, 
but I will walk you through how this works. At the moment, we just talked about how to install it. And in the future videos, I'll walk you through the basics. And then we're going to see how we can use the applications and the programs that come with it. So you can play around with it if you want. But if you don't know anything, don't worry. We will walk or go over everything that's in here.